Accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Sometimes it feels like video analytics is all about accuracy. And then again, nothing is more complicated than accuracy. And today we're gonna find out how to do it properly. So if you're a vendor of video analytics, you definitely know the questions by customers when they ask about accuracy. Of course, it's a valid question to ask by the customer because in the end, they wanna figure out if this stuff actually works. But the thing is, accuracy is being calculated in so many different ways. You can do it in so many different ways, so you cannot even compare it between different vendors. And one of the reasons is that it's really, really hard to figure out. And that's independent of questions like how and where did you measure it? Did you measure it in the lab or in the real world? It's just the measurement and the calculation of the accuracy itself is really a tough thing. In general, we divide between two different kinds of video analytics when we talk about accuracy. The first one is counting-based video analytics. So you can think about people counting or vehicle counting. So everything where you have a certain count that you're supposed to reach. And the second one is events-based video analytics. And that's, for example, perimeter protection, where it's really about detecting specific events that happen from time to time, but not all the time. So you, uh, you have to consider all the things that have been detected as well. For the first one, for for example, people counting, it's kind of straightforward. I mean, you can take a time frame and you can take the total number of people that should be counted divided by the numbers that, uh, that have been actually counted and you get a certain percentage out. It's also not super accurate because some people might be counted, some people might be counted twice and in the end it evens out, but at least it gives you a pretty good idea. And if you want to be more accurate, you can actually count every single person that crossed the line in the people counting example. So these counting based applications, they are kind of okay when we talk about accuracy, but it gets much more complicated with event based applications, for example, like perimeter protection, because it's not only about do you detect this person climbing over the wall? It's also about what happens around it. How many false alarms do you have? How many people did you miss? Uh, all these kind of things you have to consider. So it's not just like taking one number divided by the other number. It won't give you the accuracy. And this is something very important that we have to consider when we, uh, when we do projects. So let me introduce you to a very nice concept, how to get to accuracy for these type of scenarios. And this concept is called F1 score. The F1 score comes from research and was developed to give a holistic idea of accuracy. And on the basis of it, there are four different terms. And that is, False negatives, true positives, true negatives, and false positives. So let's get, uh, get started from the left top. False negatives, those are the ones you were supposed to detect, but you didn't detect. True positives are the ones that you were supposed to detect and you did detect. While true negatives are the ones you didn't detect and were not supposed to detect. And false positives are the ones you detect and you were, weren't supposed to detect, so typically, that's what we understand under false alarms. And to get an accurate result, you really have to consider all four of them uh, to get a good mix and a, a good feel for accuracy. So you take all of these, and based on these, you calculate two different things, and that's precision and recall. And that's what is being used in deep learning a lot to test the accuracy of deep learning models. Precision is really telling you how accurate are, are you or how precise are you. And for this, you basically take all the true positives, so that the real ones that you detected, divided by all of them that you detected, so your overall um, numbers of events, including the false positives, so the ones where you had false alarms. And this, this gives you a certain number. If you are super accurate, 100% accurate, this will, be, um, this will be one, because you divide the true positives by the actual uh, positives that you detected, which is the same number, so it will be one. Typically, it won't be one, typically it will be less than one. And then you take recall, which is, um, did you detect everything that you were supposed to detect? And there you take the true positives that you detected, so the real ones, divided by the total number of events you were supposed to detect. So again, if you are uh, very accurate, this will be close to one. Um, likely it won't be one because you probably missed some events. And based on precision and recall, you put them together in the formula. I will put it here, so if you want to geek out, you can take a, a closer look, or you can go over to Wikipedia where it's explained very nicely. But the point is that the F1 score um, encompasses all these concepts. It encompasses precision, recall, which is uh, a collection of false positives, false negatives, true positives, 
and true negatives. And this is how you calculate accuracy correctly. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was interesting. If it was, and if you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe below. And otherwise, see you next time.